Hey, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 100. This is Twip. Hey there, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Uh, sitting virtually next to me is my good buddy, Mr. Troy Miller, to talk through some of the uh, submissions into the uh, the Twip Pro community this week. Troy, this week was love. The topic is love. love. Love's in the mm -hmm. air because what's what's Friday of this week? Do you remember? Um, the day before Saturday. Uh, oh. The day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are, you're just digging your I own know. grave. It's I Valentine's know. Day. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. I've already ordered my gift, I'm just saying, and it should show up on the 13th. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, you know, no doghouse for me. Are you buying a gift this year? Are you? No, I never buy gifts. No, it's never gifts. It's always flowers. Flowers? You got to do both. No, I don't. You got to have flowers delivered, and no. then you got to present them with a gift that uh, during the evening. Come on, you know this. No, no I've been, I'm going on 30 years of marriage. I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> oh, see, that's the kiss of death. Complacency. <laughs> that's what happened to Kodak. So <laughs> no, no, no. It's been That's what happened to Kodak. You know, doing the same one. thing. You know, past successes does not necessarily dictate future successes. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you got it. Doesn't necessarily dictate that it's a bad process. That's either. true. That is true. That is true. All right, we'll see. We'll see who ends up ahead of the game Saturday. <laughs> well, cool. Well, speaking of love. This week's topic was love, like we said. Yeah, and uh, we got some we got some interesting submissions to the to the community. We got some very interesting submissions. Yep. So, but like we said in the last episode, we are doing something different this time around. Instead of just us stepping through each image, um, right. we're going to you're gonna you're gonna pick your um, what one or two of them, and then you're gonna yeah, go I've got two. You're, okay, so you're going to pick two. We're going to step through them, and you're going to, or you're going to actually do edits on those images live as we record yeah. this, right? Okay. Yeah, some very minor stuff. I mean, none of these, most of these images. I'm looking at them now. They, there really isn't a whole lot that that I would want to do to them, other than mm, some dodging and burning and some little tonal tweaks. So these are pretty mild, but they're still pretty helpful with the images, I think. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Well, we'll dive in and do that. But we'll step through. We're going to step through quickly and do our yep. our just overall critique, and then we'll go back and do the uh, do the chopping up with Photoshop action there. Right, right. With no reading of all the uh, the titles, is that what we're doing? Right, yeah. We're just gonna we're not gonna to have time to go through and read all the captions, so we'll just read the titles and and go. Got it. All right. So you ready to dive in and take a look at this week's crop? I am ready. All right. Let's do it then. I'm gonna switch over to the Twip Pro community, and here we are. Our first image, and we're gonna go relatively zippy through these. First one is from Matthew Feist. Remember, the topic was love. All right, this is a nice candid. Yeah, this is really this is really cute. For me, I, I zoomed in nice and tight on uh, the daughter's face mm -hmm. and cropped out mom, just to just to kind of play because I think that's where the big story is. But but in reality, um, this whole image just is is timeless, mm -hmm. right? Like we all have these of our of our kids of our daughter uh, playing, and and you want to remember these forever. So these are great. Did you crop in on the you crop the mom out, but you kept the daughter and the four and the candles and all that? Yeah, I mean, to me, that that's where the real story is. I love that, you know, she's hugging mom's arm and everything. So for me, that's where I really want to focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I like it. I would have, I think I would have done the same thing because the, the other things in there are distracting, like half of the balloon, the chair with nobody in it. And mm -hmm. yeah, the story, the story, is, and the mom is even cropped off a little bit. So yeah, just, right. we don't need to know her from a, from a, I would say, from a uh the perspective of a stranger looking at this photo it's sure. stronger with just the girl in the cake from the perspective of somebody that's a family member looking at this photo you want you probably want all of them or both the mom and the daughter in there right and i think that you know when i cropped it one of the things that i really liked was um the the storytelling of just the daughter's face and then the arm in there like we know that that's somebody that's precious to her that she's you know comforted by that mm -hmm. and so i think that's kind of neat you know that little bit of mystery of who that might be yeah no i agree very cool cool shot though 
Very cool shot. Thank you, Matthew Feist. All right, next shot up is from your friend and mine, Mr. Freddy Sedano. Uh, and this is a Breaking Celine. Let's take a look. I know. <laughs> if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, <laughs> first episode, first scene of season one, uh, yeah, the, our, our hero in the story is out someplace like this with underwear on so <laughs> okay okay <laughs> with a gun with a gun so and a trailer the trailer's not in the shot but yeah i don't and oh. it's only the character so i don't know who this other guy in the scene is so <laughs> in this case but cool what do, you, what do you think this is like a an obvious play on breaking bad obviously yeah sort it's of play with it it's such a fun story. Um, even not having watched Breaking Bad, but I know I know the <clears throat> I know the show. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it it's intriguing, right? It draws me in. It makes me see that there's a story there. I'm not quite sure exactly what that is if you don't know the story behind this, right? But if you do, it speaks very clearly to that. So um, you know, journalistically, it it's it's wonderful. I like the balance. I like the lighting. Um, the mystery of the gas mask on the on the road. Yeah. I, I, I wish we had a little bit more dimension um, in the in the in the spacing of our subjects. So, you know, maybe Freddie would be moved back a little bit further and then the face mask would be back even further. And everything right now is on the same plane of focus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And for story wise, looking at the shot, you know, this would be I could see this as a movie poster or a TV show poster or something promotional. Um, but I would love to have seen Freddie sort of walking up from the you know walk walking towards the main subject you know just sort of sort of right. menacingly and then you've got uh you know our main subject with a gun not necessarily looking at the camera or just something something more dramatic i think right i mean this feels this feels posed right it's because you're breaking the fourth wall you're looking at the at at the camera uh brie is looking at the camera and they're stacked so if brie was moved a little bit to camera right freddie was moved a little bit to camera left maybe walking into the scene looking mm -hmm. off to the right right Brie was looking straight ahead where she's pointing the gun you would feel like you walked into a moment mm -hmm. yeah. um yeah you know so Either either way, I mean, I dig the composition. I like the treatment, the 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 graphic elements and the edges of the print. Uh, there's no appendages cut off. Mm -hmm. It's you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> it's it's well done. It's very it makes well you done. think for sure because you're like, what the heck is going on here? This is pretty girl in the foreground with tidy whities on and shoes yeah. that don't fit. Yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> she's got shoes that don't fit on. And you got the guy behind her looking menacing, you know, smoking a cigarette, looking at the camera. And then there's a <laughs> gas mask down there. What's that about? And they're out clearly in the middle of nowhere in your area right. somewhere down there. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like this is probably like ten minutes from your house right probably in a riverbed somewhere yeah, yeah i yeah. don't i don't know i don't know but i told freddie i said i want to shoot the next one of these that they do so yeah this is cool this is cool <laughs> good job freddie and thanks, thanks for posting in here it's good to see yeah you. yeah this is really good yeah i like it when he gets in there all right and then moving on armando brook is up next all right let's take this one remember the topic is love uh oh i already see some pandering <laughs> so, <laughs> with the border on here so it's he's nice <laughs> it's so nice it yeah. looks it's really good i love this image i mean this image is just it's just wonderful um i i you know the the treatment's great the black and white treatment is great i love the high iso and the little grainy mm -hmm. effect that's going on in there I would just dodge her face a little bit more and try to bring up some detail mm -hmm. in there just a, just a bit, but not not too much. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It definitely captured emotion on this one. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yep. With the ring in there, you can imagine that, you know, they're married. And is that is that on the right hand? No, the ring is on the wrong hand then. Yeah. 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 But it's just a it's just a it's just a wonderful emotive moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like it. I mean, I see these at weddings all the time. So yeah. these are yeah. the kind of the kind of snaps you want to get. What do you think about the key line around the image? I like it. And even yeah. though it gets kind of thin at the top. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I like them to be the same all the way around. But I like that super thin black line. Again, that harkens back to the traditional mat where usually you would cut a mat that has a little black line in there mm -hmm. just to create that little bit of separation. Um, yeah, it's nice. I like it. I think it's, I think it's well done. Very cool. 
I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You're a fan. I love the grainy black and white. I miss that. That that we used to be we that used to be like you try to get rid of that, you know. <laughs> it's like, "Oh man, I got to use ISO 400 film today." Yeah. yeah. And now it's it's a thing. You got to try to achieve it. And when I switched to digital, it was I had a really hard time with how smooth the images were, you know, yeah. the low ISO smoothness. I missed that grain. Mm-hmm. Um, now now I've, I've gotten so used to that. Uh, I, I have to add grain sometimes. You know, <laughs> exactly. I like the smoothness. I want that perfect tonality. You know, now we're fighting for that all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's what we, we people are fighting for it. The old school It's like restoring an old car. I know. It's like I know. Back, back then you hated this car. Now we're trying to get it back to what it looked like. <laughs> I know exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Karen Sweeney's up next. And Karen Sweeney, let's take a look at her shot. Remember, the topic was love. Love. All right. I wish I knew what that is. My eye goes straight to the words at the bottom and then gets frustrated because I can't read them. Right, right, right. No, you know, I love the image. I think that um, this is one of those images where her description helps you with the image. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Because just right off the bat, you just kind of don't understand it. I mean, understanding like Buddhism and things like that and peace and understanding the world is kind of cool. Um, the candles, the calmness. I love the giant uh, wishing flower back there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I like to I like to catch those on fire. Um, I was gonna say those are also known as dead dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> if I see one of those in my yard, that sucker goes in the fire. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I have a whole series of images where I'm. It's called burning the wishing flower, and it's just it's different phases of those flowers burning. Oh, interesting, <laughs> interesting. There's one of those in my front yard right now. So maybe. yeah, yeah, they burn really nice. Um, <laughs> that you sound like a pyromaniac. <laughs> I know, I know. Those crack. They burn really nice. <laughs> Oh, uh, but what do you think of the shot on the merits of the shot itself without the I, without know, the I, caption to support it? I, I dig the shot. I wish that the, the 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 focus, the vignetting was different. We had some dodging and burning, which is, you know, one of the things that I played with when I looked at this image was, you know, the outside statues are brighter than the center statue. But I think the center statue is really sort of the center of focus. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I wish that that the outside edges were a little bit darker and then, the you know, the face of the Buddha was a little bit brighter. I understand that's where the candles are and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you have a little control over that. Yeah. Yep. This is so, cool. I like I it. I mean, it's, the shadows it's are cool creative. too. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, this is definitely a shot that, that pulls you into it and makes you think about it. And then the, of course, we're seeing a trend of borders now for some reason. I don't know where people are getting the idea that borders are amazing, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I look forward to the critique where they're all bordered. Uh, That's going to be a good day. Oh, God. Jeez. Stampley will never do it. No, no. (laughs) Just to be anti. He will not do it. He will not do it. That's why we love it. Nope. Neither would Jake Hicks. Jake Hicks is not a fan of borders either. (laughs) All right. Let's move on from this one. Uh, Thank you, Karen Sweeney. All right. Next shot up is Eric Pronsky. Uh, Let's take a look at this one. Again, dig. again, the topic is love. I feel like their love is shooting out from them into the upper atmosphere through an orange beam of light. <laughs> you know, I just I just thought it was so cool. It was just so casual, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, I like if you look at them, they're like you could tell these are two people that are are obviously comfortable and familiar with each other. But right, when right. you get to the point where you could just kiss without <laughs> even using your hands or arms, <laughs> it's just boom. And then she's leaning in, she's on her toes, so it's just kind of cool. Adds a little bit of tension to it. Yeah. And then the graphical nature of this is like divided into you know thirds with that line splitting the two yellow pieces at the top and then the horizon line the ground at the bottom and then they're right at the t intersection of all that you know yeah i i dig it this is this is certainly one of my favorites um this is an image i think that would benefit from some vignetting again you know i I think that there's probably some vignetting at the top but i still don't think they pop out enough yeah so saturating the orange pulling down the the blue tone in the concrete would really help create some separation yeah pop them out of there yeah though this definitely speaks to love though doesn't it 
Yep. And it's subtle. And w- that's what I really love. It's not super obvious. It's just kind of subtle. Mm-hmm. So this would this would be this would be great um, on a uh, on like a card or something. Yeah. Yeah. Especially you do like a heart shaped vignette on them or something. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Or <laughs> no. put, put no. their parents kind of floating in the air looking <laughs> down on them. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of each of the, yeah each of their faces like coming in from the sides like looking at them looking in the down lovingly yeah God that was a terrible phase in you did that party. too I know you had no, to do I that at not. least once I come didn't. on didn't that was didn't. like a that was like a rite of passage for wedding shooters never you had once. to put the parents in the clouds come on never never <laughs> did it and I never did the dress in the mirror either oh you never did that no one. no I'm like hell no I'm not doing that <laughs> nonconformist. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. All right. Thank you for that one, Eric. All right. Next up is Joshua Sommerfeld. Joshua. Joshua's our resident nonconformist. <laughs> yeah, he put this put his captions on the image. Joshua, sorry, we'll have to crop that off for the post on the blog, but we can look at it here. It's captured in its entirety in prosperity for the video, but it's not going to be on the site. Uh, I- what do you think of this one? I love it. I think, you know, I think swans are traditional. I think it's very cool. Um, they're very classic. Um, I, I like the shot. I, I I would probably trim off the left side a little bit and put the swans dead center and then just a little bit more burning in their face. We just need a little bit more in the shadows. But that's probably Mighty Network crushing the blacks for again. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I wonder, like a shot like this, I wanted to run it by you on this one. The I know we we always say on this on the on these critiques that if color is not adding to the story, then consider removing it. Right. In a shot like this, especially with swans that are pretty much devoid of color anyway, except for their beaks, um, does it make sense to go black or white on this, or would it would have been better to leave that color in and let them be sort of the monochromatic element of the shot? Um, I don't know. I think it depends on what the background looks like. You know, if that water like green, it looks like like kind of swampy greenery back there. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's if it's dark green, then maybe it's that doesn't really add to the element, the graphic mm-hmm. elements, because really you want to see the swans and the shapes, of the heads and the bodies and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's certain colors that just don't appeal, and I'm sure like the branches in the back are probably tan or brown, and then you know there's darker green or others back there. So. Mm-hmm. And then you get I'm the reflection gonna, of all that foliage in the water because that comes right. down to like halfway in the image is the reflection of whatever is at the top half, right? Or the right. Top, top third. Yeah, exactly. So that's so, you know, my guess is going to be this is this is going to look better in in black and white, assuming that those colors are there. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. I think I think Josh Warren wanted to put the, he wanted to put his X of data on here because he wanted us to see that he shoot it with a 77 D. <laughs> he's, he's shooting with his EOS 77D and that Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Yeah, uh-huh. that's a bit, that's a that's a mean lens. That's a monster. <laughs> yeah, very cool. All right, well, thank you, sir, for that one. Joshua Sommerfeld never disappoints. And then Michael Duray is up next. And let's take a look at this one. Remember, the topic was love. <laughs> that's literal <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that's yeah literal i you know it's it's these are one of these images that i that i look at and i just i just wonder what the story is like what is that banner representing and you know how hard was it for somebody to get those lights all the way around there and mm-hmm. where's this guy going and what's in his bag <laughs> you know mm-hmm. <laughs> you know um i love the fact that he's in a step you know that that's always really nice. If you ever do shots of somebody walking, yep. you can get it. You can get them right when they look like they're standing still. Mm-hmm. But this looks like he's in motion, which I like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it has a black border on it. <laughs> and it has a black border. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is. A, I think this shot is a candid shot, right? So it's a candid yeah. sort of photojournalistic street photography type shot that yeah. I think if you were, but one of the things my brain goes to is what's the story of this shot? But in the in a shot like this, it doesn't necessarily have to have a story. This could be in context of like four other shots that, that tell the story, right? So, you know, like a triptych or something, this could be part right. of that triptych. This, this could be another great Valentine's card, you know? Like mm-hmm. just just with no words, just this. <laughs> 
You're walking would, away from my heart. It would be so great. <laughs> That's what right? it says to me. You're turning your back on my heart. <laughs> I could just see this, you know, at like the Target card stand, and you're looking at like all these like highly decorated love cards and everything, and you see this one. Yeah. This is the one I want. Yeah. Yeah. It's kitschy <laughs> and, and sort of tongue in cheek. Yeah. Right. Right. And and look, the, the, the kerning on the H is not. It's, <laughs> and the Y is different than the ERT. So. Well, the font of that E is different than the H-A-E-A-R-T. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's a different. See, now we're getting into it. And the kerning between the M and the Y. And the M is a different font, too. Yeah. Yeah. See, now we're in this world. Oh, see, man. Suck us in. <laughs> suck us into this heart world. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. Doesn't have the same serifs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't let Kira see this shot. It's going to mess with her <laughs> graphic design sensibilities. Yeah. Uh, Craig Stanfley's up next. Oh, and man. Craig. You're in a weird order, so I got to catch up. Oh, am I? Am I not going? Don't change the order, though. Or I'm in a weird order. Whatever. You're in a real. Yeah, I'm going. Dates oh, you are. You're right. You're in. The, for once, you're in the right order. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> I told you I'm learnable. <laughs> All you gotta do is learn me, and I get it. I get it done. <laughs> All right. Well, look at this one. This is gothic and a little yeah, scary. This, like, what's going on, Dexter? Yeah, this has this has a lot. I mean, so you know, I've I've never watched Dexter, but mm -hmm. I understand the premise, and you explained it to me, so I understand the story of this. Um, even if I didn't know that story, <clears throat> it's still creepy. Yeah, and it and it's creepy in a <clears throat> in sort of a fun way. So. I, I just, I, you know, where does where does one have a heart laying around? Like, how does a butcher? How did he do that? A butcher, he a, maybe. I don't know. He had a week to plan this, so you know. Well, uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say that's not a real heart. That looks like a, that is probably a ceramic cast or something of a heart. Craig, Craig can let us know for sure, but I don't think that's from a mammal. I think that's even so. <laughs> even so, he has one. He has one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess it's fair because Tim Ingle has a Michael Jackson mannequin, right? And yeah, we're uh, yeah. in, a, in, a, in an iron tub in his studio. So, um, but to this image, uh, I like the story. I like what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I, I wish it was balanced a little bit better. I understand that the fork and the knife are centered, but they're lifted a little high. So there's space at the bottom. I understand that's for like that dribble, mm -hmm. you know, the spray. But open up the <clears throat> open up the scene a little bit, because the lower left has a little bit too much negative space for me. Oh, I see. Okay. And then just as far as the story goes, like there's there's this blood on the knife, but there's no cuts on the heart anywhere. Oh, so well, the the heart had to get removed. So presumably that would lead to some. Blood. Okay. All right. That makes sense. <laughs> I, well, I wasn't thinking it that way. I was thinking, you know, like you're going to eat this thing and that the knife was used, but okay, you're right. So yeah. it had to be removed. Right, All right. right. So we're going darker. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah. We're painting a whole story, which means the image is working. Yeah. I agree with the negative space on the left. Um, I thought you, I thought your OCD was going to kick in on the distance between the, the utensil on the left and the knife on the right. Well, that's what, I, that's one of the things in, in the whole balance of this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like to me, this whole image is screaming for balance and that is perfect symmetry where the plate's dead center the knife and fork are perfectly centered and then this the the stream the spray can cut, go right off the frame it doesn't have to be balanced mm -hmm. in the frame. yeah yeah so i mean that's just a that's just a recrop in in this case but would it I be too kitschy or too uh, too sort of old school to do? I like his color treatment here, but if he had brought some red into the blood a little bit to make it look more like blood versus it looks like A1 steak sauce right now. <laughs> I like it this way. You know, I think that it's uh, I think it's very, you know, film noir mm -hmm. kind of style, yeah. you know, um, not just because it's black and white. I mean, you could certainly monochromize this with just red and then all the other colors, you yeah, know, would yeah. flat. But I like it this way. It makes you look at the image over and over and over. And if you had that bright red stream in there, um, that's all you would look at. So I think it would be a success either way, to be honest with you. But I like it. I like it in monochrome. Yeah. It's not true monochrome. It's not. It's like muted. It's like kind of 
first third of the matrix kind of desaturation <laughs> <going on. laughs> yeah this yeah that's a little green yeah right yeah this is the this is a meal neo would have had or something <laughs> <laughs> all right cool shot thank you craig stampley all right and then uh last but not least is never apart and this is by lamb all right lamb yeah here we go all right. What yeah. do you think of this one? It's 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 really cute. It's really cool. Um, you know, if it was just the old couple, it mm-hmm. would be really cool. But yeah. the fact that the dude with the Ferrari hat, you know, he's giving you a stare. Mm-hmm. I it adds to the whole element of this thing. Um, and I and I like it. I, I like it a lot. And I think that again, this is one of those where the monochromatic probably works really well because you've got that orange cone in the background you've got all these other people in the background various colors and clothing this really helps us <clears throat> to focus on the couple i would i would do some vignetting to bring some focus on the couple a little bit more but that's about it yeah that guy the, the third guy in there kind of mad dog in the camera he looks like he might be chinese secret service or something <laughs> <laughs> right at the camera like what are you doing i Come mean idea ideally i mean if i was shooting this if i saw this happening i would try to get the cleanest background i could mm-hmm. and and uh, fill the frame with the couple as now, much would as you i do possibly. that would you do that through composition or through optics i.e shallow depth of field both. I mean, you know, depending on what lens I have available to me, if I have an 85-1.4 and I have space to move, I would I would use that lens, go wide open. If I could, go super shallow. Um, if I couldn't, if, you know, let's say I'm shooting with a lens, whatever's on my camera, right? 5, 6, 24 millimeter or whatever, I'm going to move to a place, get a little bit lower and wait for a clear spot behind them. You know, had 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 you waited to to the Ferrari hat dude had passed them and looked back at them, that would have probably been better. Yeah. Or that they weren't stacked timing. It's just it's timing. It's it's waiting and watching for that that best moment. You can't always get it, but that's the goal is watch the scene. Watch the scene play out in front of you. Yep. Very cool. All right, Lamb. Thank you, sir. All right. Is that it for this? This crop of love shots looks like it. So that's it. So now comes the point in our show where we switch gears and getting old. Troy Miller takes over (laughs) to got my my pen. You got your Wacom tablet. You got your I got my Wacom tablet. I got my pen. You got an image loaded up in Capture One over there. I got an image loaded up. We're going to pop through a couple really quick. All right. Here we go. I'm switching over to your screen now. And there we go. Yeah. Take it away. So so most of these images didn't really need a whole lot of help as far as like cloning or fixing. Um, But what I did see that a lot of them could could benefit from was some vignetting. So like this, this one versus this one. So what I did is I just vignetted on them a little bit stronger and I I pumped up the orange and I reduced the blue. (coughs) And that was it. Yo, right over there. <laughs> See, when you're not on camera, right? You, that's when you have a sip of coffee or yeah. I was trying my eyes were watering. I was trying to reach the mute button. <laughs> that's awesome. I'll just keep going like nothing happens. Yeah, just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> nothing to see here. Keep driving. Nothing to see here, yeah. <laughs> so in this one I did I did a little stronger vignette. So this is the before and that's the after. Just to bring a little bit more focus on that on that Buddha. Same thing here on that on that couple walking. I did a vignette, a little bit more vignette on the on the oh, old gentleman yeah. there. I like that. Yeah. It just draws attention. You know, that's that's really my goal is with a lot of these. The same thing like with the swans. This is the before and that's the after. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, I'm sure that uh I'm sure Joshua knows that it's that it's mighty. We when we say mighty, it's the network. The uh, when you upload them to the forum, they compress the images a little bit, so that can be that can be tough. And let, let's really... just be clear: that's the mighty networks forum, and that's the the right. previous home of the Twip network. <laughs> right, right. So uh, this one I just vignetted as well. So this is the before, and that's the after. Mm. Just a little vignette. Now you could you could go in there and you could crop it. So if we wanted to, you know, we could just come in and and crop like right in here. 
And that's that to me is still super cute because I love that arm. See, that's a that's a grandparent shot right there. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that. So the the two that I was going to play with is uh, one, which is a Mondo's. And so really what I did was is I just brought up the face. And the way that I did that in uh, Capture One is simply grab the brush, make a new layer. And I'm just going to I'm just going to brush in her face there a little bit. If you hit M, you can see the the mask and I'm going to bring up the brightness. Now, the brightness is more subtle because it it covers more spectrum of highlight to shadow than does exposure. I think exposure is more severe. Mm. So I always I always vignette or highlight with with brightness. So I'll bring that up just a a tad. And that's it. So you can kind of see the difference between those two just ever so subtle. Right. Yeah. Now, if you don't have capture one and you want to do that in Photoshop, Photoshop is is pretty clever in the fact that you can do camera raw. So you would do filter, do a camera raw filter, and then you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to grab the brush. Hang on, it's going to it's moving too slow. There we go. But everything Photoshop hates me. There we go. Because you keep cheating on it with Capture One. That's what <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm cheating on cheating on Capture One by using. <laughs> so there we go so now the the reason that i do it through camera raw now notice that's that's a really nice uh adjustment the reason that i do that through camera raw is let me reset this image is that if you just use the dodge tool in photoshop um it's very harsh Mm. and and notice the the contrast is very severe versus it's crunchy yeah, so it's better to go to the camera raw and apply those filters and then bring them back and do them as layers. That's really good. So if we go back to uh, Capture One, so this is Craig's image, obviously. And what I did is I just I did some more dodging and burning, but I did a little bit more than just that. So this is the after. I'll let you look at that for a sec. Mm-hmm. And this is the before. So my, okay. and the after, my eye goes straight to the heart. Right, straight to the heart. And then, so what I did is I'll, I'll turn off the layers. So, so this is the, this is the first layer. So I basically brought up the brightness. I vignetted <clears throat> around the outside so that we can get, get to the heart. And then I added clarity to the heart. And then what I did is I brought up the knife. See that right there mm-hmm. off Yeah. and then on. So I brought up the knife. So we have our primary hook, which is the heart. We have our secondary hook, which is the, um, the knife. And then what we talked about in the, let me open up the crop to unconstrained. There we go. So what I would probably prefer is something something like that. Yeah, something like that. See, so so for me, that's a little bit too loose. I think he's just trying to keep that little little stream in the lower hand corner. Yep. I would do that. And there's a speck down here on the tablecloth that I really, really, really want to remove. But in the in the scope of this image, being kind of gruesome and in, in gooey and ooey, right? Yeah. I'm going to leave it. Oh, OK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, blood yeah. spatter. <clears throat> yeah, I would leave it. Yeah. So that's really it. Those are those are the things that I would do. Um, I'll just show you real quick in uh, Capture One. You would just simply add a layer, grab a brush. Actually, I would probably do this with a vignette. So what I'll do is I like to vignette the subject, bring down the outside. And then if I need to bring up the whole image, I'll go back to the background. I'll bring that up a little bit. Oh. Create a new layer, and that's going to be the knife. Grab the, the paintbrush. If you hit M for mask, and then if you right-click, you can say auto mask, which is already on. What that can help do is help grab the edges of the, br- of the, of the knife, which I'm not really worried about. So I might get a little bit in there, being a little sloppy, but that's fine. Go to M, and then I'm going to turn up the exposure because I know it. I know it's going to pop highlights a little bit more. That's so nice. I love that. And I just want, all I want is the difference, enough difference that it stands out. So primary is the heart, secondary is the knife, and then the rest of the image kind of falls, <clears throat> kind of falls back. So you can kind of see those turned off. I like it. Very cool. Yep. So you're still in love with Capture One, I see. Oh, I dig it. I no, really no more do. Lightroom for you. Is that your Lightroom days over for the most part? 
I go I go back to Lightroom when I need to. If I have an older job, it has to be over three years old. So mm -hmm. I have I still have jobs in Lightroom. I have to go back and edit. And I got to tell you, it's not like it's it's excruciating or it's terrible. It's just there's the fidelity of the imagery is so much better in Capture One and the control I have and the layer control. It really comes down to this layer palette right here is magic for me. Being able to do this, you just can't do this kind of stuff in in Lightroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You have you have yeah. control points and it's pseudo layers. It's just it's not the same. It's not layers. It's yeah. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's local image adjustment with pins in the areas that you want to edit. Right, and and like here, I can even turn on. Let's see, I can turn on a uh, heel layer, take my brush, and I can come down here and I can I can remove that little spot. I can tell it where I want you to clone that from. I can come over here and I can remove this stuff. Actually, you know what? You can only do one. Then you have to do a new heel layer. And let's see, I can take that spot out and that spot out. It's going to ask me where I want to clone from. So I'll clone from there. So I can do so much work right here in Capture One that I would have to get into Photoshop to do. And now I would call this image done. I would output it um, for printing. Can you get all of your image edits for the most part, like in a, in a wedding workflow? Can you mm -hmm. get all of your or most of your edits done within Capture One? You know, notwithstanding like heavy retouching type things, but can yep. you, you can get everything done? Yep. Yep. I can do blemishes. I can do bags under the eyes. I can do, you know, even some stray hair removal, um, things like that in Capture One. And it's almost as fast, if not faster, in some instances, because I'm not switching applications. Yeah, that's true. So you know, the, the, round the, tripping the, and smart objecting or any of that stuff. Yeah. My big gripe for Capture One is to get an image out of here into Photoshop. You have to right click on the thumbnail. Then you have to go to edit with pick Photoshop. Then it tells you what you're going to use, which you do the same every single time. And then you have to hit edit variant. Yeah. So there's three clicks and it, it, there's no shortcut key. There used to be you command E, you could program command E and it would just pop out into Photoshop. So that's my, that's my only workflow gripe is that takes too long. So I try to do most of it in capture one. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for editing those. Yeah. And I'm still over here trying to get over this cough. <clears throat> it was this, this never breathe coffee. Let me tell you, it doesn't work. Coffee and lungs, they just don't mix. I don't know. Right, right, um, right. Do you have a, uh, a favorite shot? Do we have a favorite shot that we want to talk about? Uh, uh, it's, it's Craig's. It's yeah. definitely Craig's, yeah. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Yeah. This guy right here. Although, Craig Stanfully, I think I like the edit. You know, <laughs> but this is your shot and this is what's going in the gallery and on the front page of this week in photo. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very cool shot. It's very creative. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Good job. How's this? How was this for our first uh, sort of, you know, uh, watch me fix an image style critique for 100? Yeah. Like I liked it. I thought it was very cool. I think I think it's fun. I think it's fun getting to show examples of some of the edits and getting to play with the images. And hopefully that translates to techniques that people can just use on their own as opposed to us saying, oh, you should just vignette that object. Well, what does that mean if if you're in Affinity Photo or you're in Photoshop or Lightroom? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. You know, or Capture One. Like, how do you do that? So that's our goal is to kind of throw some of those in there. I, I think we'll find a lot of the same techniques are used over and over and over because there's not too many unique ones, but it's neat to see how it affects the image. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, yeah, showing and telling versus just telling is, right. is, is powerful. Right. Um, right. Well, speaking of that, we need to tell people what next week's <clears throat> critique is going to be. I have given it zero thought. So Ooh. I'm going to put you on a hot seat. Troy Miller, <laughs> what you know, is next I week's knew, critique topic? <laughs> I knew you would do that. So I pulled up my list of a hundred options. Oh, okay. Let's see what we got. Bring yeah. it up. Bring it. Uh, do I want to be easy or do I want to be tough? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's let's see. let's see. How about how about found in the garden? Found in the garden. Okay. All right, yeah. you heard it. That guy came up with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you want to blame somebody? Blame the beanie guy over there. Oh okay. man. 
So I'm moving it from the list of options to the list of used topics. There you so go. I'm moving that. I'm going to move that down. That's officially for 101. You know, found in the garden is kind of opening up a bag of worms, especially for people that are in Australia, because <laughs> their gardens contain different things than, you know, gardens on the other parts of the planet <laughs> contain. So but it, we but may it be works. in trouble, you know, we'll see. But it works. And I'm, it works. I'm interested to see what Joshua will come up with. Joshua Summerfeld. Yeah, I'm interesting. interested to see his garden. Because yeah. the garden in his area might be different from the it's garden big, in other areas. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's got swamp gardens. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like prehistoric dinosaurs and stuff. No, no spiders. No funnel spiders. What's wrong with spiders? Yeah, spiders are <laughs> spiders can be found in the garden. I'm just saying. I know. Yeah. I'm just being honored. From our member mixer, we talked about spiders. We a lot, did. Though. We did. Yeah. No one likes spiders, including me. Um. Yeah, they're okay in photos, just not near me. Some people can't even stand that. Some people just don't want to see them. Period. I'm like, hey, you know, technically they're Earthlings too. So deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They Ooh, are. I like that. Yeah, yes, they are. They yeah, are. I'm gonna have to stop using the word. Well, sometimes I'll say humans, but I'm gonna have to start saying Earthlings because that could be everybody, right? Exactly. I exactly. Like it. I always I think like, like if a if a race of, of aliens came down that were sort of an evolved species of arachnid, they would talk to the spiders first. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you know, should we invade, guys? What do you think? <laughs> that, that was Starship Troopers. That's what that movie was all about. That was Starship Troopers, yeah. The only good bug is a dead bug. Dead bug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of would the you, best movies ever. Would you like to know more? <laughs> I love it. Paul Verhoeven, where are you, man? We need you. Oh, Cinema needs you, man. Come on. How we digress. Yeah, I love it. All right, so next week is Found in the Garden. That's found in the Garden, yeah. Found in the Garden. All right, we'll see. Let's see. There's the Troy Miller gauntlet thrown down for folks. <laughs> Can you guys come up with a Found in the Garden shot? I'm expecting garden slugs and worms and flowers. A flower, yeah. It could be a flower garden, yeah. Garden no. of Eden, it could be religious, you know, you never know. So Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you never know. Yeah, okay. Let's yeah. see it. Yeah. Secret garden, you never know. Secret so. garden. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> some <laughs> other some other things entered my brain that I'm not gonna mention right now. I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> top gear you think of top gear yes yeah uh, yeah let's let's <laughs> let's keep this normal though let's keep this okay. critique normal. <laughs> all right man i will let you okay. go we are uh look there we have record time for this critique we did we did the reviews of several images uh and the show and tell all within you know under 45 minutes so awesome awesome we can do it we can can be done it's it's the reading the the uh the caption Cap thing yeah. that sucks up a lot of time. I think we saved a lot of time by not doing that. So. Right, right. I agree. All right, man. Well, enjoy your week. And uh, yeah, we'll have to check in with you after Valentine's Day to see how that went. And if you were <laughs> if you were successful. I'm going to have to send Margie a couple of letters or a couple of uh, text messages to up her expectations. I'm going to say, hey, hey, Margie, guess what I'm doing for Valentine's Day? What are you getting? <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll even I'll even add to this. She gets the exact number of flowers and the exact same flowers every year. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know yeah. what you could do if you're doing that. You could just put in an order at one eight hundred flowers and just have it reoccur every year at the same time and deliver the same flowers. So you could just set it up for ten years. And they don't deliver. I go pick them up. Oh. I, I hand pick them. Oh, there's the romantic part of it. <laughs> okay. There's... I want to make sure they're just right. But and then yeah. you, you hide like some Tiffany's jewelry in the flowers no. or something? No. Nothing like that? No. <laughs> No, 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 nothing like that. No. Good. I need to take a page out of your book. Your book seems much more economically feasible than mine does. Margie gets th Margie gets three roses and Kira gets one. What? Nice. Every year. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Camera would be upset if if Nicole got three roses and she only got one. <laughs> that would not work. That would not get work. her a yellow one. So it's different. It's there unique. you go. There you go. All right. Yep. Yeah, have to be yellow rose and some LOL dolls or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right, man. Well, cool. Enough of that All chit right. chat. I will. Uh, I'll see you in the next critique next week. You got for, it. Uh, yeah. Found in the garden. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Take care. See you later. Take care, bud.
This is Twitter.